Hello, in today's video, and because of your requests, we're going to be taking a look at how to install Clipper on the Ender 3 V2 printer. Now, for those unfamiliar with Clipper, I do have a separate video on my channel going over what Clipper is as a 3D printer firmware and some of the benefits to running it. The printer we're going to be using today is a stock Creality Ender 3 V2. The controller board on it is the 4.2.2 revision. You should be able to use this installation method on most of the Creality 32-bit machines. You may need to refer to the configuration settings for your individual printer just to ensure that you're adjusting the right settings and using the right configuration, but you can use this method to flash the firmware on any of those printers. Now there are a few things you are gonna to need to install Clipper on your machine, and the first thing is a Raspberry Pi. Now we are gonna be installing Clipper using one of its standalone interfaces. Today we'll be using Fluid, however Mainsail is another option. And the advantage to using the standalone interface is they require much less power. So today I am going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3A to install Clipper. However, if you do not wish to run a webcam on your printer or you don't need one, a Raspberry Pi Zero will be able to run Clipper just fine on your printer. So if you have one of these that's been collecting dust because it hasn't been powerful enough to run Octoprint, you can run Clipper on a Raspberry Pi Zero just fine. Now, you are gonna to need to power your Raspberry Pi Zero. So you could use a plug-in wall power source like I'll be using today. You can also, if you have the skills to, wire in a buck converter or a separate power supply for the Raspberry Pi itself. You are gonna need whatever kind of USB cable you need to connect your printer's controller board to the Raspberry Pi. And lastly, you are gonna need two SD cards. You're gonna need an SD card to flash the firmware on your controller board, and you are gonna need a separate SD card that will be installed in your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're going to be doing is downloading and installing Fluid Pi on our SD card that will be installed in the Raspberry Pi. Now Fluid Pi is the standalone SD card image for Fluid. This will make the installation method much simpler. So I'll have these all linked below, but simply go to the Fluid GitHub and download the latest release. And then once it is downloaded, you can use something like Bellana Etcher here to flash it to your SD card that you'll be using in the Raspberry Pi. And then we just let that process happen. Now, once this is done and the SD card is flashed, you can go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi information so you can connect to your Raspberry Pi over your home network. And you're gonna go ahead and go to the WPA supplicant file and enter your Wi-Fi SSID and the password for it here. Don't forget to delete the pound signs. And then also at this time, if you do plan on running a webcam, you can enter the Fluid Pi folder or Mainsail if you're running Mainsail OS. And at this point, you can adjust your USB camera options for resolution and frame rate. Now we can take our SD card and we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi and then plug the Raspberry Pi into its power source. Do not plug it into your printer yet. And then once powered on, you can go ahead and connect to it over your home network through your web browser via its IP address. If you're unsure of what the IP address is, you can connect to your Wi-Fi router usually, and it'll display a list of everything that's connected to it. It should show up as fluid. So as you can see now, we are connected to it and we are missing a configuration. So we're gonna have to go ahead now and make the firmware portion to flash onto the controller board so that we can talk between the Raspberry Pi and the controller board on our printer. To do that, you are gonna to need to SSH into your Raspberry Pi. Now I use PuTTY here as my terminal of choice. And then you just enter the IP address here. And then when you connect to it, the default login is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. It's the same procedure as Octoprint. Now at this point, we need to make what's called a make menu config. So I'll have a link here to the Clipper website and you can follow along with the installation method here, but it's simply copy and paste in CD Clipper and then enter the command make menu config. This will bring up some options here. Now, what you have to adjust here is based on your controller board. So as you can see here, we are using a default Ender 3 V2 controller board, it's the 4.2.2. What you can do, if you're running a different printer, you can go to the Clipper config section and just reference what the configuration settings are for your specific printer at this point. So according to this, we need to select the STM32F103 as our controller. And there we go. 
and we need to select a 28 kilobit bootloader. And then we need to disable USB for communication. And then you hit escape, save, and we're done. So after we're done setting up the configuration here, we're gonna go ahead and run the make command. This will generate our file. And then once that process is done, we are going to have to take that file off the Raspberry Pi, install it in an SD card, plug it into our printer, and boot it. So to pull it off the SD card, the software I use is called WinSCP. And then you can open up a new session. You can enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You need to ensure you're connected over SFTP. Username is Pi, password is Raspberry. And then once you're connected, go into the Clipper folder, the Out folder, and then you will see a file called clipper.bin. That is the file you are going to need. So what you can do is just drag and drop it over to the SD card you'll be using to flash your controller board. And you're going to have to rename it. Now, according to the instructions for the controller board that the Ender 3 V2 ships with, when you rename this, you cannot simply name it firmware.bin. You have to name it something else other than firmware.bin, and it must not match the last file name that was flashed. So I'm gonna call it kfirmware. And then once that's done, you can eject the SD card. So after we have the firmware file renamed to kfirmware on the SD card, we're gonna go ahead and unplug our screen. On some controller boards, having a screen plugged into the controller board when you flash it prevents flashing. So just to be safe, we're gonna remove it at this time. It won't be functional with Clipper anyways, so you might as well remove it. We're gonna take our SD card, install it in the printer, and power it on. Now it should flash automatically on power up. Finally, we can go ahead and take our Raspberry Pi and plug it in to our printer. Now what we can do at this point, there is a command that we can run that will ensure that we are talking to the controller board itself after flashing it. And as you can see right there, we are connected. Now in the default configuration, this is the serial address. If your serial ID is different uh, in the configuration from what is shown here, simply swap it over because this is the serial ID you're gonna be wanting to use in your configuration. So at this point here, you can connect to the Raspberry Pi through your web browser, and you'll see here that it's missing its configuration. So now we're gonna go ahead and install our configuration for the Ender 3 V2. So to do that, go over to Printer and select Config Examples and then scroll down until you find the Ender 3 V2 or whatever printer you will be installing Clipper on. And then download it. Then you're gonna scroll back up, switch over to the config directory, and then you're going to upload the downloaded config to this directory. And after it's uploaded, go ahead and rename it to printer.cfg. And restart the firmware. Now, once the firmware is restarted, you do see we do have some warnings here. And this is because this configuration is meant for Clipper itself. We need to add some stuff now that is specifically for Fluid or Mainsail if you chose to install Mainsail. So we're going to open up our printer config. And in this case, since we're using Fluid here, we're going to go back to the Fluid GitHub, scroll down to Docs. required configurations. And then as you can see here, you can just copy and paste each one of these into your configuration. I like to put macros at the bottom. Save and restart. And there we go. Now we are configured properly with the default configuration and everything should be connected.
So now we have Clipper configured with the stock configuration for the Ender 3 V2. And as you can see, everything's homing fine. We should be good to go ahead and do a test print now, just to ensure that everything is set up properly. Now with Clipper, there are some further tuning you may wanna do, especially with a fresh build. And I'll cover those things such as PID tuning and pressure advance in another video. Input Shaper is a little bit more advanced and will get its separate video. So I hope you found this video informative. If you do have any questions, as always, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you like that smash button. And if you wanna see more content such as this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you wanna support the things I do and the content I produce, I do have links in the description to do so. So I hope you learned something new today. And as always, be safe out there and have yourself a great day. Thank you.